Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayyu al-ahbab continue on in our studies of Imam Babahari's treaties rahimahullah ta'ala and we were discussing the methodology of Ahl al-Kalam like the Ash'a'ira and some of the other sects that uh, give precedence to their intellect over the textual nusus. And we're reading some of the statements of Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al Madhali Hafidullahu Ta'ala, where he was saying, Emma Ahlal Ahwa wa Dalal wa Kalam wa Falasifa for Yukadimuna or Kulihim, Allah Nasus Ilahiya wa Nabuya wa Yazamuna en al Akla, Yufid al Yaqeen wa Nasus Shar la to feed al Yaqeen for Yukadim Aleha. ويزعمون أن العقل هو الأصل فإذا تعارضت النصوص الشرعية مع العقل وجب رد الشرع إلى العقل وكم قد اختلفت عقولهم وتضاربت أرائهم أرائهم فأي عقل منها يكون هو مرجع والحكم قاتل الله الأهواء وأهلها. The Sheikh said, "Have the Allah Taala." And we already went over some of this, and this was uh, uh, in relation to Imam Babahari's statement, where he said that the religion came from Allah, the Blessed and Most High. It is not something left to the intellect and opinions of men. So Sheikh Rabi, have the Allah Taala said, he said, "As for the people of desires and misguidance." And kalam, as we mentioned this, we explained this previously, and philosophy. That they prefer the intellect or they give precedence to the intellect over the nasus, over the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. And they claim that the intellect uh, is yufid al yaqeen, that it is what gives certainty. And you know, in, in rulings and, and what have you. When the Susa Sharat la to feed al Yaqeen and the, the, the text do not give Yaqeen that you need the intellect in order to make those judgments to to be the driving force. This is the minhaj of Ahl Kalam. And they claim that the intellect is the asl, that it the the, the, the origin of everything, it's the intellect. That that's the most important thing. Whereas Ahl Sunnah is la, the nusus. That's the origin. The origin. Our foundation is built on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu not upon our opinions and our intellect. And this is why, as the Sheikh says, he says. So if there is a, uh, a contradiction or between the text and their the the Islamic text or the Sharia text and the intellect, then it's an obligation according to their minhaj to take the shara and reform it to their intellect. And by Allah, as I'm discussing this, it just made me think of, uh, what's his name? Um, the one who d talks about the hadith of the Jijal a lot, um, Imran Hussein. As I was Explaining this and reading the Sheikh's Kalam, it just made me think about him. This is the biggest difference between us and him. Our minhaj, our methodology for understanding the Quran and the Sunnah is totally different. His thing is he's explaining, oh, it must mean. He infers, uh, yes, this, uh, it couldn't have possibly meant this because the distance between Africa and uh, the Middle East now is such and such. And the UN, it must mean this. And the Salafis are still waiting for this to happen. No, we go with the text. But you go with your intellect, what fits your intellect, what fits your judgments, what you can rationalize. Well, there's a difference between what Imran Hussein rationalized and what somebody else rationalized, and what I rationalized, and what someone else infers, someone who's greater in intellect than him, and someone who's lesser than him. There's a big difference between every individual, there's a different intellectual capacity, meaning that if we all were to explain things in accordance with what fits our desires, we're going to have a lot of problems. We're going to have a lot of different explanations. And you, how are you going to practice your religion based on that? More importantly than that, is that that's not the minhaj of the Salaf. 
The Prophet ﷺ wanted us to make taslim in nusus. Don't follow your hawa. Follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. We mentioned all, all through, you know, throughout this dars and, and others. Follow Allah and His Messenger. If you disagree over something, return it to Allah and His Messenger. Not to your intellect, not to your feeling, not to your desires, not to what seems most logical, not what is the world standard, not what is the, uh, the, the most prominent hypothesis in science today. That's not Sharia. That's not Islam. Islam, as Imam Baba Hadi said in the first Ibarah, Islam, who was Sunnah, was Sunnah to heal Islam. Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. They, they require one another. They're a part of one another. And, and not based on our intellect. It's based on us reading the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and making Taslim. Oh, Nabi and Muhammad وسلم, said this? Khalas, I'm on that. Oh, the Sahaba and had ittifaq on this? Khalas, I'm with that. That's the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And that's what difference between Ahl Kalam. And as the Shaykh says, Habib Allah Ta'ala, he said, and how many people that have, they have different intellects and different views and, and, and uh, con contradicting views. So which intellect from amongst them sh should we return to? Should be the, the, ju the judging intellect? Which one should we judge by? And make a judgment and a ruling by. And then he said, he made dua. He said, may Allah curse the, the desires and the people of desires. Then the Shaykh said, Allah Ta'ala, wal haq and the shara huwa, huwa uh, huda, wa fihi nur, wa nususuhu qur'aniya tufida al yaqeen, wa kada al ahadith al mutawatira wal ahadith al ti talaktaha al umma. Be kabul to feed al ilm al yaqini in the ahl al hadith, wa kathir min al ulama al firq, wa huwa al waqi'. The Shaykh said, Have the Allah Ta'ala, he said, and the truth is, is that the Sharia is guidance, and that it is light, and that the Quranic text, they to feed the yaqeen, they give us certainty. That is the reality. It's coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet He said, and likewise, the the ahadith that are uh, you know have many chains of narration that are authentic, and that the ummah has agreements that they are uh, they're accepted by the ummah. That those those nasus they to feed al yaqeen, they 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 give us certainty, and that's with ahl hadith, the people of hadith, and many of the ulama of the of uh, many of the other uh, ulama and the other sciences, uh, and that's the reality. So that's a very important statement. For example. When you read Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, you don't think twice about whether it's authentic or not. Especially us as, as people who are not from Ahl Hadith, not uh, lay person, you know, we are lay, laymen, as, as so to speak, or what have you, and small students of knowledge or whatever, that we don't think twice about, you know, well, you know, I wonder, is this Hadith really Sahih, or this and that and the other, can I operate by, no. We operate yaqini. Wow, I read a hadith and the Prophet ﷺ said this, then it must, it must be true. We, we don't think, you know, I, I, we, and we don't need our intellect to push us forward on that. But this is what differs between us, Ahlul Sunnah, and Ahl Bid'ah, especially Ahl Kalam, is their intellect is the driving force and it's the judgment. And they use those nasus to, to, those nasus have to fit their intellect. If they find a contradiction, then they will take those nasus and distort and change the meaning to fit their intellect. This is the difference between Ahl Sunnah or Ahl Bid'ah. And then he said, 
that the intellect of the people of desires وَمَعْكُلَاتْ أَحْلَ الْأَحْوَى لَا تَقَوِّدْ إِلَّا إِلَىٰ الْجَهْلِ وَحِيرَةِ وَالضَّلَالِ He says, so the intellect of those people of desires, it only benefits or it only leads to ignorance and confusion and misguidance. And then he mentioned the statement of Imam Barbahari. He explains, he says, وَقُولُهُ فَلَا تَأْتَبَ شَيْئًا بِهَوَاكْ فَتَمَرَكْ مِنَ الدِّينِ فَتُخْرُجُ فَتَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا حُجَّةَ لَكْ Where Imam Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, uh, do, not, uh, do not follow anything from your desires and lead to leaving the religion and leaving Islam. For verity, there's no excuse for you in this. There's no excuse for you in this. Then the Shaykh explained, he said, Ittiba al Hawa Kad Yu'di il Kufr. So let's let's get uh, just translate. The Shaykh said that following one's desires, it can lead a person to disbelief. Uh, if they are arrogant to the truth or mustahillan meaning that they make it lawful the the unlawful lawful or they uh, make their bid'ah or what have you lawful uh, in contradiction to the nasus of the shara and it also could lead to just uh, misguidance if the person respects the sharia text but he falls into uh, mistakes and he's not making those mistakes lawful. However, his desires overcome him and his, his shahwat, his shahwa. Then there is no excuse for either one of those with regards to uh, mistakes in the religion. So very important, as the Sheikh is mentioning here, is that, as, and as we mentioned in prior sittings, that when we have those uh, mistakes, and uh, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, when we read through his explanation, he explained it very detailed, that we have those two uh, types, and the, uh, two types in many aspects. We have, for example, in Bid'ah, we mentioned Bid'ah Mukaffara, Bid'ah Ghayra Mukaffara, Bid'ah, which is... Uh, Bid'a Mukaffara, which takes you out of the full Islam. Bid'a Ghayra Mukaffara, Ghayra Mukaffara, doesn't take you out of the full Islam. So that Bid'a, which does not take you out of the full Islam, is Bid'a Ghayra Mukaffara. You also have, with regards to the other forms of sin, like Vum, oppression. You have oppression that is uh, uh, disbelief, takes you out of the full Islam. And then you have oppression, which is not, which is in the full Islam. Vum. You have Fisk, Fisk Akbar, which takes you out of the full Islam, and Fisk Al Askar, which uh, does not take you out of the fold of Islam. And then you have uh, Kufr al-Akbar or Kufr al-Askar. You know, you have the major Kufr which takes you out of the fold of Islam and the minor Kufr which a person is not remo- taken from the religion due to that. But it's a major sin. As well as Shirk al-Akbar or Shirk al-Askar. So many things you'll find is divided, the categories are divided in Islam. And the point uh, of mentioning this is letting you know so the statement of Imam Baba Hari the Sheikh is saying that we should apply that in relation to those people who are doing the major Bid'a uh, Bid'a which is taking them out of the full Islam because it's a very strong statement and Imam Baba Hari it's known in some of the ulama they speak about this his statement some of them they give it the best possible meaning. Some say maybe it's a mistake that it, you know his ibarah was too strong, but it's a very strong ibarah because he's saying that you know following your desires and going against the shudder at all is is taking you out of the fold of Islam. In a, that's one interpretation, but the Shaykh has given it the best meaning, which is the way the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah is looking at their other thing. We know Imam Baba Hari was far from the Khawarij belief. He didn't believe that major sins take you out of the fold of Islam. And, and so forth, but rather he's using those strong ibaras and referring to those people whose bid'ah and mukhalifat 
have become in totality with regards to the Sharia and absolute and that they um, that they are that they take an individual out of the fold of Islam for example bid'ah mukaffara the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam etc then the Sheikh said Hafidullah Ta'ala with regards to this statement of Imam Babahari he said وَقَوْلُهُ فَقَدْ بَيَّنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِأُمَّتِيَ السُنَّةِ وَعُوذَهَا لِأَسْحَابِهِ He said, where Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, then the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has made clear for the Ummah, the Sunnah, and has, and has clarified it for his companions. So the Shaykh said, the reason for this is because the statement that Imam Baba Hadi said, La hujjata lak, uh, that there's no excuse for you. Because, why? Because the Prophet والسلام, made his sunnah clear and he made it clear for his sahaba. He, he, he clarified it for his companions. So the Shaykh then mentioned an ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ أَتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدَى مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي قَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ In Surah Al-Qasas, uh, Qasas, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, And who is more misguided than the one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? Verily, Allah does not guide the uh, wicked doers or the uh, sinful oppressors. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah says in another ayat, وَلَا تَأْتِبِيُ الْهَوَىٰ فُيُذِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَضُلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَسُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem in surah al uh, sad uh, that do not follow your desires for they will uh, misguide you from the path of Allah. And verily those who are misguided from the path of Allah then they will have a pain, painful uh, punishment for what they uh, forgot regarding the day of judgment, the day of reckoning. Then Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَهُمْ الْجَمَاعَ وَهُمْ سَوَادَ الْعَظَمْ وَسَوَادَ الْعَظَمْ الْحَقُ وَأَهْلُهُ So this is a very important statement. We'll try to get through this quickly and gain the benefits of Sheikh Rabi here. He said, where Imam Babahari said, uh, and, and they are the Jama'at, meaning the Sahaba, and they are the Suwad al A'zam. Suwad al A'zam, meaning that they are the, um, uh, the main body. The main body. Suwad al A'zam al Haq wa Ahlahu. And the, the Suwad al A'zam, the main body, is uh, the truth, is on the truth, and their people. So then the Sheikh mentioned, in the main body, and as he's going to explain, we're not talking about democratic reforms here. We're not to say that democracy is the haq, but what the Sheikh is saying here, he explains in the first ibadah, he says, Yani and the Sahaba, whom are jama'ah. He said that the Sahaba, they are the jama'ah, they're the main body. فَمَنْ خَالَفُهُمْ وَقَعَ فِي جَاهِلِيَةِ وَالضَّلَالِ لِأَنَّهُ اتَّبَعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَاللَّهُ تَوَعَدَ مَنْ يَتَّبَعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِهِمْ He said they are the Sahaba. That's who the main Jama'ah is. And whoever differs with them falls into uh, ignorance, a practice of jahiliyyah and misguidance. And they are following other than the path of the believers. And Allah promises those 
uh, you know, a painful torment those people who follow other than their path, other than the Sabila Mu'mineen, other than the Jama'ah, other than the Sahaba, the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een. Then the Shaykh says, Hafidullah Ta'ala, Thumma inna ahl al-haq luhum jama'ah fi ayya zaman wa ayya makan wa law kanu qilla falaysa al-ibra fi al-islam bi kathra قال تعالى وإن تطع أكثر من 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 في الأرض يدلك عن سبيل الله إن يتبعون إلا الظن وإنهم إلا يخرصون. So uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala says وقال تعالى وما أكثر الناس ولو حرست بمؤمنين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or the Shaykh said, uh, that the people of the truth in the Jama'ah, that they'll, they're around throughout all time and they can be in any place, even if they are few. And the Ibra, or the proof, or the, the main point. Uh, in Islam, it's not that it's uh, a lot of numbers. It's not the haq is, does not lie in large numbers. And the law says even uh, if uh, if you were followed by most of them in the earth, or most of them, they will. Yudilak uh, an sabili la that they will misguide you from the path of Allah. That if if you followed them, <coughs> if you followed most of the people on the earth, then they would misguide you uh, on the sabil Allah. They would misguide you from the path of Allah, and because they only follow uh, speculation, and they only ex uh, have expectations and stuff like this. They they speculate about the truth. Well, the hereafter could exist, it might not exist. Uh, you know, I wonder, do we go to heaven or do we go to hell? Uh, is there a torment of the grave or isn't there a torment of the grave? I wonder what it's like there. You know, this is how a lot of people live. A lot of people who claim to be Muslim and, of course, many non-Muslims. They live, they don't really have a purpose and they don't have the certainty. And that's, again, going back to the text, as we said, Kitab al-Sunnah gives you that certainty. You already know, you believe that there's a torment of the grave after this. After this, there's something more than this life. It isn't just this, this life, this hayat dunya that there's something after this, is a hereafter. And the first stage is going in Al-Barzakh. And it's, it's going to be in the grave. People are questioning the grave. And it could either be comfort, comfortable or it could be discomfort. So we believe that and we know that with yaqeen, with certainty, from the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the then the Shaykh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, he mentioned another ayat where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, and most of the people uh, will not be guided uh, to in being believers, even if you strove your utmost. So then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, so most uh You know, most of the people will not be, uh, he said, or he said, now, he said, there's many from Ahla Haq, Alhamdulillah. However, do not think ever that the, the, the Haq or the truth lies in Kethra, in being a, a lot. Like the way many people from the people of misguidance state. You know, so they believe the truth it lies in numbers. It doesn't lie in the truth in and of itself, but it lies in numbers. This is how many of the people of misguidance think. And he says, for verily the scale is Islam. It is the truth. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Beda al-Islam gharibin wa sayyu'ud kama beda gharibin futubi lil ghuraba. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said in Sahih Muslim in the Kitab al-Iman, and also in the hadith 
a hadith of, uh, in, collected in Ibn Majah, by Ibn Majah. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that Islam began strange, uh, and it so return strange. So give g- glad tidings to the strangers. And then the Shaykh said, وَعَلَى كُلِّ هَوْ قَدْ يَفْهَمُوا أَهْلَ الْبَاطِلِ أَنَّ الصَّوَادَ الْأَعْظَمُ هُوَ كَثْرَةً لكن المؤلف يرد هذا الفهم الباطل بقوله وسواد الأعظم الحق وأهله. So then the Sheikh said, um, you know, على كل حال he said that uh, we uh, that the people of falsehood they understand that the سواد الأعظم is that the that the main body is the majority. Or is in, in huge numbers is the majority. However, the mu'allif, meaning Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, refuted that in his, uh, refuted that, under, that false understanding in his statement when he said, Suwad al meaning the main group or the main body, is the haq, is the truth. And its people. So that's a refutation of those people who think it's the truth is by large numbers. But no, the truth is with the people of the truth and the truth itself. So the truth stands in and of itself. It doesn't need a lot of numbers. So sometimes many of the people will be on the truth and sometimes they won't. So the truth in and of itself is, is the scale that we judge by, not by the numbers and the amount of people. It's not a democratic election to get to Jannah. Then Imam Baba Hari said, so whoever uh, differs with the companions of the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shay min amr al-deen faqad kafar. So whoever differs with the, uh, the uh, companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an affair of the religion has disbelieved. This is one of the statements that... Uh, Definitely requires explaining, and this is why we go to the shurahat of these texts, the explanation, and go to the ulama and their understanding and how they look at and how they understand not just the nusus, but they understand the context of the uh, what these great mountains of knowledge from the salaf were writing uh, about, and 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 they're able to look at their textual nusus and look at the complete meaning of what the Mu'allaf is saying. So here Imam Baba Hari gave a very strong statement and the Shaykh says that the author here is warning against those people who intent, who, in, who intentionally uh, differ with the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is the case of them. We're not saying anyone who makes a mistake or anyone who differs with the companions. No. Out of ignorance, out of you know whatever other excuse or something like this or even some top wheel that they have. But instead... Uh, or you know misinterpretation, but instead this is the person who intentionally goes against. Men ta'amid al-mukhalifa Men ta'amid al مُخَالَفَةِ أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَلَا يَبْعَدْ أَنَّهُ يُرِيدُ بِالْكُفْرَ كُفْرَ الْأَسْقَرْ لِأَنَّ الْكُفْرَ كُفْرَانْ طيب. So he said, whoever uh, intentionally differs with the messenger, the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, so then the Sheikh said that it's not far fetched to, to say that Imam Baba Hari here means kufr yuridu bi kufr kufr al askar the minor kufr. So when Imam Baba Hari used the statement fakad kafr, uh, the Sheikh is saying that what he meant here is he's referring to the minor kufr, not the major kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And then he said, and the reason is, he said, a kufr kufran, as we mentioned. There's two types of kufr, kufr al-akbar, yukhruj min millat al-islam, that the major kufr takes you out of the fold of Islam. وَذَلِكَ لِي مُخَالَفَاتِهِمْ فِي أَمْرَ الْمَعْلُومْ مِنَ الدِّينِ بِدْرُورَ And this is because that the, a person who disbelieves or differs with something which is well known from the religion. Like for example, if someone were to say now, something ma'lum min adin bi even non-Muslims, no Muslims, are not supposed to eat pork. And they're not supposed to drink alcohol. So if a Muslim were to say, alcohol is halal for me. Not that he drinks it, but alcohol is halal, if he says it's halal for him. Or riba, or uh, pork. 
These are things that are known, well known. Ma'lum in adin bidurur. They're known in the religion by necessity. You know, everyone knows. Uh, even in the Qariya, almost almost everyone knows. So you know, and some in the ulama they even differ about what some of the things that are ma'lum in adin bidurur and and what constitutes that. But this is not the place nor time to get into those lengthy uh, discussions. But the point being is to get us up to speed to let us know that there are things with the ulama they call ma'lum in adin bidurur. Those things which uh, every Muslim, you know, knows by necessity. You know, every Muslim knows they should pray. Okay? So the one who says, no, I don't have to pray, then this person uh, would probably be judged with kufr, with disbelief, because they have denied something, ma'lum min adin bidurura. Even the non-Muslims know Muslims pray five times a day, mostly. If they've heard anything about Muslims, they generally know that. And and then the shaykh, he explains further, he said, bidurura. He said, kasab Allah... Uh, and some of the things that are known by the religion out of necessity to take you out of the fold of Islam that are wicked sins, major sins that no person can, should call, can call themselves a Muslim and do these things, some of the things he said like cursing Allah or cursing the religion of Allah and his message or his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam those things are known by the religion to a necessity and that the person that does these things is not a muslim uh oh bi takfir sahaba akiram illa qalilan minhum so or the sin of the person who makes takfir declares the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in to be uh, disbelievers Except only a few of them, which of course is the deen of who? Is the deen of the Rafida, the deen of the Rafida, the Shia, and those other Shia who curse the companions and, and make takfir and then say they're not Muslim and other wicked lies about them. And so this person you cannot regard as a, a believer. They're not a believer. They're not a Muslim. So you can't pray behind a Rafida. You can't pray, uh, you can't eat their food. You can't eat their dhabha. You can eat from a Jew, Jew and Christian. You can eat their meat if it's slaughtered, you know, if they're Ahl Kitab and they slaughtered it by their, you know, their code of Ahl Kitab. But you cannot eat from a Rafidi. You cannot eat from uh, a mulhid, someone who's left the fold of Islam, even if they slaughtered it according to Sharia. It's not permissible, their meat. Nor is it permissible even if the Rafidi slaughtered by the, if they are Thabita, that he's a Rafidi, that he uh, has this belief uh, that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Another thing the Shaykh mentioned, he said, O oh, istihza billah wa rasulihi wa kitabihi illa akhir al nawaqid al Islam. He said, or if they made fun of Allah and His Messenger, or the book, the Quran, uh, and or any of the other things which are from the Nawaq al Islam, those things which take you out of the fold of Islam. And then he says, Wa kufr al askar kal half bi ghayri la wa ka yasir al riya. So uh, some of the minor forms of kufr, he's saying, you know, the kufr al askar is like al uh, half bi ghayri la, like to swear. Uh, by other than Allah or to have minor uh, riya to, to show off for example in your prayer or whatever some act of ibadah that you're showing off in that this is the uh, this is the minor uh, shirk and a minor uh, you know form of kufr al-askar the shaykh said hafadullah ta'ala and then he said the reason, you know, he's given now the reason why he he explained that and gave Imam Baba Hari the benefit of the doubt for such a strong statement, saying that if you differ with the Sahaba on an issue, then you've left the fold of Islam. So he says, "Well, Mu'allaf Imam Ya'lam had a fark bain al kufrain wa kar yaksir al Mu'allaf kufrain wa li kulli min huma asbabuhu wa mojibatiha." The Shaykh said, he ended in this, he said, and the author was a great Imam. He knows the difference between the major and the minor kufr. So this is why he probably meant, the author meant, the two types of kufr. 
You know, meaning that in his statement, he was referring to the major kufr, the major bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And for each one of them, there's reasons, and there are, uh, you know, there are reasons and there are um, ahkam or rulings pertinent to it, and there are things that necessitate uh, it being kufr, necessitate it being kufr al-askar or afkar, kufr al-akbar or kufr al-askar. And so, thus ends that section of the treaties, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.